Hi, my name is JC. In April of 2022, I was diagnosed with chronic inflammatory response syndrome, also known as SIRS, biotoxin illness, or mold illness. SIRS happens when someone who is genetically predisposed to being really bad at eliminating a biotoxin encounters that biotoxin. Today, I wanted to talk through some of the medications and supportive therapies used in a SIRS treatment protocol. I'm not a provider, but I am an experienced patient. I've done a lot of research and I even read the textbook. So as someone who dealt with chronic pain for a while there, I just was not interested in pursuing any sort of symptom management or just a fruitless rabbit hole that was going to lead me nowhere. The thing that really convinced me about the SIRS protocol was all of the clinical research behind it, specifically behind the Shoemaker protocol. It's the only clinically proven path to healing from SIRS. In my own testimony, I can say after six months of treatment, it is a night and day difference for me. Before I started treatment, I could hardly walk. I was using a cane. I was in pain all of the time. I had a ridiculous amount of random symptoms. And now I am almost fully normal. I still have a couple steps of the protocol to go. If you are interested in working with a shoemaker provider, you can go to survivingmold.com. All of the certified physicians there submit an essay talking about their philosophical values around patient care. So you can kind of see who you might vibe with. And then um, I actually used to work in medical offices. And so I really highly recommend calling a few of the offices and getting a feel for the front office staff. You will be working with that provider for 12 to 18 months and I can guarantee you if the front office staff are miserable, you're going to be miserable as a patient too. Just a little pro tip for you there. There are 12 steps to the Shoemaker protocol. Three of the steps are necessary for everyone, but the middle steps are really determined by your blood work and your symptoms. All to say, not all SIRS patients have to do all of the steps of the protocol. Depending on your provider, your symptoms, and your blood work, they may choose to take a more functional or prescriptive approach. In the case of mold, this can mean moving or remediation. I am going to do a video on remediation, so if you're not subscribed, definitely subscribe so you don't miss that one. In the case of something like Lyme disease, you may need to treat the Lyme before you can move forward with the protocol. The next step is the biotoxin binders. These binders are very specifically charged and they have a specific receptor cell site. Unfortunately, general binders like clay and charcoal just don't work for eliminating biotoxins. These binders were found to be effective against biotoxins accidentally. Dr. Richie Shoemaker, you may recognize his name from the title of the protocol, discovered them when there was an outbreak of algae in the bay near the small town that he lived in. He was a family practitioner there and he had this outbreak of patients with really weird symptoms and he treated one of them for secretory diarrhea with this old school cholesterol med called cholestyramine, hoping it would help constipate them, but he actually found it improved all of their symptoms. And so that's what led to the clinical research and trials that we have today. Before starting the binders, it does help to do lipid replacement therapy, meaning you take high dose fish oils. The binders themselves are old school cholesterol meds. They can actually strip your cells of fat, so we want to buffer that fat ahead of time. It'll help you tolerate the binders better. The most common symptom of the binders is constipation, which can be corrected with magnesium citrate. For some lucky people, myself included, you have the opposite reaction to the binders. It's a Herx reaction, and so you have diarrhea. Luckily, this resolved for me after a couple of weeks. Biggest symptom I had from the binders was just extreme exhaustion. The first two weeks, I felt almost narcoleptic. I would lay down in the middle of the day and take a nap. It would take me like 13 seconds to fall asleep. Over time, the binders did become more tolerable, and now I don't really get any side effects from the binders. The most commonly prescribed binder is called cholestyramine. It is the most effective at removing biotoxins, it's also the hardest to tolerate. Additionally, it comes in a powder form, which can be inconvenient both in taking normally and traveling with. A lot of people do have to get this compounded at a pharmacy, especially to not include any of the fillers. SIRS patients tend to be really reactive to things, and so those fillers can cause histamine reactions. You can also pay more to have them compounded into pills. A lot of people find that if they mix the cholestyramine, also shortened to CSM, by the way, into a shot glass and just shoot it back. Other people have recommended boba straws, so it kind of gets back into your throat, but it's 
the straw is wide enough for the cholestyramine to go through. Either way, after you're done taking the cholestyramine, you'll want to brush your teeth. It can destroy the enamel on your teeth, so it is important that you brush your teeth after taking the cholestyramine. The next most effective binder is called Wellcol or Colocevalum. It is easier to tolerate, but it only has 25% of the receptor sites that cholestyramine has. It comes in a pill form, so it is much easier to take and much easier to travel with. While it is more convenient and easier to tolerate, you do have the downside of prolonged healing time. The third binder option are beet or okra supplements. They are the least effective. They are also the easiest to tolerate. However, they come with a downside of being really high in oxalates. So people with oxalate sensitivities will not tolerate these binders well. They have a downside of a substantially longer healing time. For people who have SIRS, there are a lot of co-infections you can have. The most common one is Marcon's or multi-antibiotic resistant coagulase negative staph in your nose. This can be eliminated with EDTA or BEG or xylitol nasal sprays. If none of those therapies work, you can also try ozone therapy. The reason it's important to eliminate Marcon's is because it keeps your MSH low. MSH or melanocyte stimulating hormone is one of the hallmark symptoms of SIRS and it causes a lot of downstream effects. Next is correcting the anti-gliadin antibodies that are produced as the immune system is liberated by SIRS. Anti-gliadin antibodies are typically found in people who have celiac, which can cause both gluten intolerance and dairy intolerance in SIRS patients. The treatment is actually a gluten-free diet if you are sensitive to dairy, also removing the dairy. Next is correcting androgens or sex hormones. This can be done through supplementation. Then you correct the ADH slash osmolality. ADH is antidiuretic hormone. It helps regulate your water retention in your body. A lot of people with SIRS will find that they have extreme electrolyte imbalances, causing frequent thirst, frequent urination, and random static shocks. A lot of patients are able to manage this with electrolyte supplementation, and some can take medication if it doesn't seem to be corrected by the other steps of the protocol. Then you'll want to correct MMP9. It's an indicator of high inflammation. This is typically done by taking omega-3s and eating a low amylose diet. Then you'll correct VEGF. High VEGF reduces oxygen flow to your cells, and by correcting this, you can improve the blood flow in your capillaries. This can be done through diet, exercise, and again, fish oil supplementation. Then you'll need to correct the C3A. For people who have chronically high C3A throughout the entirety of the protocol, if the other steps don't address it, they very likely have Lyme disease and will need to go through a Lyme treatment protocol before this can be corrected. Correcting C4A, if this was not corrected by the other steps of the protocol, it will very likely be corrected by the VIP spray. Now, this is an indicator of active biotoxin exposure. So if it's never corrected, it's very likely the patient is still in a toxic environment. Next is correcting TGF-beta-1. TGF-beta-1 suppresses immune system regulation, meaning it can trigger a lot of autoimmune symptoms. This can be corrected through VIP spray. If it's very high in a patient, they may be put on a medication called Lasartan. The last step of the Shoemaker protocol is called VIP spray. That stands for vasoactive intestinal peptide spray. The clinical parameter to take a patient off of this step is them saying, I feel normal. In retrospect, one of my biggest SIRS symptoms was just not feeling like myself. I think maybe only SIRS people will understand this when I say I just felt like something was wrong. Something felt wrong. I didn't feel like myself. I didn't feel like I could think. I didn't feel happy. I didn't feel, I felt like a ghost of a human. It was so weird. I'm not even on the VIP spray yet and I already feel so much better. The VIP spray not only restores immune regulation, it also can turn off the errant genes turned on by chronic inflammatory response syndrome. This is the last step because even though it has profoundly beneficial effects on the body, it can be hard to tolerate if you haven't completed the other steps. 
So while not actually a step of the Shoemaker Protocol, I cannot speak highly enough of limbic retraining. For people who are chronically ill, you develop incorrect neural pathways over time. As you're constantly triggered by your outside environment, eventually incorrect triggers are formed. I'm going to do a whole video about this, but essentially, what limbic retraining is, is rewiring those neural pathways. There are a bunch of different formats of limbic retraining, and it can be something as simple as using your left hand to brush your teeth or learning to play an instrument. There are also more formal protocols you can follow, like DNRS or somatic therapies. Personally, I think the best limbic retraining you can do is the one that clicks with you and that you'll stick to. For me personally, it ended up being a book. I'll go ahead and leave a link for it in the description box down below. At first, the protocol can seem really overwhelming. It's a lot of steps, it's a lot of things, it's a lot of information, especially for people who have SIRS. They already have difficulty learning new things, a lot of brain fog, etc. That feeling of overwhelm is exactly why when my friend and I were diagnosed with SIRS at the same time, we were so grateful to have each other through that experience that we created the SIRS group. It's a supportive online community of people healing from SIRS. So if you're looking for support or more resources or just someone who understands, I'll go ahead and leave a link for our group in the description box down below. If you or someone you love is healing from SIRS, I just wish you so much peace and love and healing through this time. Thank you so much for watching today and I'll see y'all in the next one. Okay, bye.